All right, let's get this going. Man, I hope this color matches. Usually I would have done a test panel, but like I told you before, I'm somewhat under a time crunch. I'm gonna shake it up one more time in the cup. Make sure you cover this little hole when you shake it in the cup. Let me do it. With it being hot outside, um, if you don't use a reducer, pretty much the, the paint's gonna dry before it hits the surface, and you're gonna get a really dry, rough texture that's not gonna last you. So other videos I've seen guys painting, I'm gonna do a, a pretty light coat initially here. Um, not saying they're doing it wrong, and I'm sure their finishes turn out fine, but it's just kind of something that bugs me. Is there just do like a bunch of squiggle patterns with their airbrush? You should really try to do smooth passes back and forth. Um, I'm not sure that it matters so much in this type of airbrushing. It's more of something from the automotive side. Nice thing with these hooks, you know, part like this, you can just as easily pull it off there. You don't want to get too close to the part because then it's going to put too much paint in that area and uh, you might get some runs. Runs suck. You can clean the clean the run off and then respray, but I'm not a professional, and I've never been able to get it where it's completely unnoticeable that there was a run. I'm sure some pros out there might have some tricks for taking care of that, but I don't. I'm going to kind of get some of the smaller stuff done first here. I'm not con so concerned about getting the bottom of that. painting sorry the wife again uh, what was I saying I don't like painting like high dollar optics just because it is a pain to get the coating off especially without harming the, the underlying surface from the factory or finish but like this is just inexpensive Chinese knockoff from Primary Arms. Still really good quality. I'm really happy with the kind of robust feeling of it and performance of it for how much I paid for it. I'm not getting full coverage here on this initial coat. I just kind of want to get a base layer on there. Um, then I'm probably going to let that tack up a little bit and I just want to kind of see it, if it's drying on me or, you know, if there's any issues with it before I move on. Again, I'm not incredibly concerned about the inside. Um, I've got a feeling most of the paint from on the inside is going to get 
wore off by all the moving parts anyways. But I don't want to do a half-ass job, so we'll do it. Even though I hate it. Here's the other thing that sucks. Is painting pick rails. So I painted a quad rail once. And I said I'll never do it again because I hate it. A lot of surface area on this, so it used up a ton of pain. And it's just a pain. You don't want to be too far back from your piece either when you're airbrushing or else you'll get that same effect like when uh, if you didn't have a reducer in there it's going to pretty much dry before it gets to the surface. You might have seen me doing a little squiggly there but I'm just trying to get into filling nooks and crannies. Which some guys do that on like a large flat area. It kind of bugs me. There are so many nooks and crannies on a, on AR. I don't really paint the threads. I'm not sure what the threads or the barrel nuts going to go. Usually I'd even tape them up, but... Hopefully I don't get it on there. Hopefully it kind of flows out. Just kind of using the airbrush as air to quick dry some of those spots. Kind of torn on doing the mag wall. Last time I painted it, I did the mag wall, and the magazine kind of stuck a little bit. Add some more paint. Another bonus to using a cap like that. Much easier to do one-handed. Or you're holding the airbrush. Really hoping this color matches better. All right, guys, we're coming back a few hours later. Um, ran out of memory card space on my contour camera, and then nap times were over, and I had to go do dad and husband duties. 
Um, I did finish getting this stuff painted. Um, that's why I didn't have time to go and download this all the computer, get more space on the on the camera. Um, I did switch to the I want a HPTH so I could get a, a, a good fan pattern on here. It came out really good. Um, I know in the last video you guys see me kind of devil taking a spot that I thought there might be a run. I did get a run in that area and I wiped it down with a reducer quickly and reshot it. Um, Honestly, you really can't tell that spot. I can't even tell where it was at right now. Um, I did get some, just some particles in the paint. And my, my airbrush was kind of clogging. I wasn't checking the tip as often as I should have. So I got a couple of things, but this AR, I mean, I like it to look nice right off the bat, but I actually use my weapons, shoot them a lot. So I'm not too concerned if they're pretty forever. Um, I think the some wear on them and some marks kind of adds to the character and makes them look cooler. No safe queens for me. But yeah, I'm really digging the the color here. It seems to match. Let me grab here's a Magpul FDE uh, hand grip. It matches up very, very well. And uh, really Duracoat without any flattening agent has it's not really glossy, but it's got a slight sheen to it. That flattener helped a lot and kind of just knocked that down. You see it's barely reflecting the light, and I've got a lot of lights in my garage. But I really like the match. Um, I'll pause the video here in a minute and go grab the other magazine that is the Magpul FDE color and kind of compare that to you guys for you guys. Um, one thing I want to show you... Duracoat, it dries to the touch in 20 minutes and you can handle it in like an hour or two. Um, what I did after the 20 minutes is I unmasked any masking tape I've got on there. That kind of, what that'll help you do is if you let it dry too long, the, the paint that's bridging the part to the masking tape will dry too much and when you peel it off, you could peel up some, some of your paint off the actual part. So I like to take my masking tape off while it's still tacky. Um, that actually turned out looking pretty cool. I'm liking that. Uh, so I'll pause the video here. I'll go grab that other magazine and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so for color comparison here, this was the actual just straight up Duracoat Magpul FDE color. And this is the mix from today. You can tell this one's, it's a little darker, but it's also more brown than this. This looks just way more tan to me. And you can see the sheen on that regular Duracoat without the flattening agent in it. So I'm really loving this color. I should have dug out, dug out some more stuff to paint while I had all that mixed up. But it looks like we got really good coverage on everything. Um, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. You have a couple bits of trash on the paint, but once it's all assembled, you're not gonna be able to see that very well anyways, so will be all right. Um, I'm going to do another series of videos on assembling my on assembling the AR. I've done a quite a few, not a pro, but you know, might have a tip or tip or a trick that you might not have heard before. But I can't do that until I get the paperwork back from ETF so I can get my barrel because this is going to be a short barrel rifle and uh, once I get that paperwork, I'll get my barrel and We'll do another series of videos with for the assembly, but I hope you enjoyed. Maybe caught a trick or two, and we'll see you later.